Hello everybody! It's 5 a.m. on the 9th of December here in Spotsylvania, Virginia and the first snow of the season has started to fall. My workshop is all decorated for Christmas and it's time to take a look at the next plane off the pile. Today I'll be working on a Stanley number 129 Liberty Bell 4 plane. Stanley made this plane from 1876 to 1918. She has a cast iron frame, a beach bottom and beach tote and knob. The eagle on the front of this old girl means she's a Type 1 made from 1876 to 1886. It has a screw down lever cap with the Liberty Bell cast into it and the number 76. It commemorated our nation's 100th anniversary and the signing of the Declaration of Independence. It has a unique depth adjustment mechanism that isn't so popular today with the woodworkers. Considering the fact that this plane is somewhere around 140 years old, she really looks good. Normally the beach on these things is looking really bad. Here's an example of what they normally look like. Actually, this is better than what most of them look like. This number 129 is also a Type 1, so it's been around for somewhere as around 140 years. What I'm going to do is simultaneously clean up the base to see what they look like. Time to break her down. And all broken down, this plane is a good looking old plane. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen, whether it's going to be a restoration or a preservation. This might be a preservation. These old Type 1's in good condition, good original condition, are worth anywhere from two to four times more than what the book value says they are. The only obvious flaw on this plane is the hook that somebody screwed into the back. And there's a little bit of Japaning loss. We'll get a better idea how much after I clean it up. First thing I'm going to do is give all these Japan parts a good scrubbing in my deep sink. After cleaning, I can see that the top casting and the lever cap, they've retained most of their Japanning. So I am not going to redo the Japanning on this plane because it is a Type 1 and it's old. Instead, I'm going to remove the surface rust with an old worn out sanding sponge, steel wool, and a wire brush. The sanding sponge is perfect for the easily accessible flat exposed surfaces. I don't plot, apply a lot of pressure when I do this. I let the sanding sponge do the work. It may dull the japanning a little bit, but it's going to come back with the dirty oil. I use the wire brush to get down to the little parts that are hard to get at. Too many nooks and crannies to use the sanding sponge on. And the final touch is to go over the whole thing with some 4 aught steel wool. And after just a few minutes worth of work, they cleaned up pretty good. All the surface rust is removed, and now you're going to have a transformation take place when I apply the dirty oil rag. And the secret to the dirty oil rag is right there. I'm going to apply that oil to every nook and cranny, and then let it sit for a while. And with a nice heavy coat of dirty oil applied, these parts are looking better already. The next thing I want to do is move on to the wood. I'm going to start cleaning it up and see how it looks. I want to retain any lacquer that remains on the wood, so I'm going to use that old sanding sponge and the 4 out steel wool. I'm going to go over it first with the sanding sponge, always with the grain, and I want to make sure that I'm not taking lacquer off. I'm trying to do a more cleaning than anything else. It's some finesse sanding. And the same thing for the tote and the knob. A little finesse sanding to clean it up without taking the lacquer off. If you find any paint specks, get the scraper tool I showed you how to make. Keep it at a low angle like this right here and work on the specks and you can take them off without removing the lacquer. And after a light sanding and some 4 out steel wool, it's time for the dirty oil rag. No, not really, not the dirty oil rag. For this I have to use the nice clean fresh Howard's Weed and Feed or Weed and Wax on a clean rag. Otherwise it's going to soak into that finish and it's going to make it dark and we don't want that. We want to rub the oil over the entire outside portion of this plain base, the tote and the knob. And after applying the oil, letting it sit for a while, I'm going to take a paper towel and wipe it off. I used a Q-tip to get that oil all the way down into the throat. 
And with all the oil wiped off, I'm bringing it over to my lapping station where I can true up the bottom. As I begin to lap the bottom, I'm going to be watching the color. You'll quickly see where the wood's being removed. I want to get it so it's flat and true across the entire bottom of this plane and then stop there. Just a few passes. You can take a look at it and amazingly this plane is almost true. There's a low spot here in the center which is not a surprise. A little bit low around the edges so I'm going to go ahead and work on it and uh, we'll take another look in a couple minutes. So I've been at it for about four minutes. Nice even strokes. Check it. I turn it around working from both directions. Even pressure. I think I've got it about where I want it. You might have noticed that I used fresh sandpaper on my lapping station. Same thing here in my sanding block, 150 on both. I don't want to use dirty old rusty sandpaper because it will really mess up this wood. I'm going to go over this with a sanding sponge, some steel wool. Sanding sponge with the grain. Finish it up with steel wool going with the grain. And I'm going to finish the bottom with oil. It's time to move on to the iron and the iron cap. The tools for that job are my scraper with a fresh burr, or sanding sponge, and some 4 aught steel wool. First, I'm going to use the scraper on both of them to remove the rust. I want to retain the patina that's underneath. When scraping these older planes, the back side of the cap iron has bluing on it. You want to scrape it very carefully to remove the rust but retain the bluing. So the scraping's done. They look about 90% better. Now it's on to the sanding sponge. I'm going to use the sanding sponge to even up the patina. Always sand in one direction. More pressure on the dark spots, less on the light spots. The idea is you want to even it out. And when you're happy with where you're at with a sanding sponge, it's time to do the steel wool. The steel wool is just going to give me one more level of smoothing it out, making it look good. And the last thing to do on the cap iron and the iron cleanup is to use the sanding stick and a rolled up piece of sandpaper to get into these slots here and here. Pretty straightforward. Next thing I want to do is lap the back side of the iron so it's perfectly flat and then sharpen it. I did a video on sharpening irons. It gives all the details. If you want to see more, go ahead and watch that one. The lapping the back side starts here in my lapping station. I use 150 grit, then I move over to my sharpening station. I go 1000, 3000, 5000, 7000 grit on the back side of the iron, and then I take it over to the front and I do the, sharp, the 25 degree bevel to make her cut. When you're going left to right, you can see that there's a low spot in the middle and it's high on both sides. So I lap until it's perfectly flat. And here's a close up look at it after the 150 grit. See you want to concentrate on the leading edge. You don't have to lap the whole back side of the iron. Right where the cutting edge is, you want it flat all the way across. And I'm going to move on to the finer grits. There is look at the back side all flattened and the bevel side sharpened to a razor edge. You can see I squared and sharpened only the leading edge, or the last sharpening was done with a grinder, and it's at a really, really shallow angle, so I just had to do the very leading edge so we don't lose any iron. And the last thing to clean up is the small parts. I'm going to start by using sandpaper and a dental pick to clean out the slots on the screws, and when that's done, they go over to the wire wheel. I remove the bulk of the rust buildup and crud with the dental pick. Then I finish the slots with sandpaper that's folded and layered so it fits tight in the slot. And after the wire wheel has worked its magic, I give all the parts a good coat of the rem oil. And it's time to wipe the dirty oil off the top casting, the lever cap, the iron and the cap iron, and the rem oil off the small parts. When that's done, there's only one more hard thing left to do, and that's coat everything with wax, wipe it off, 
and it'll be time to put it back together and give it all a test drive. Oil remove, waxed on, waxed off, and there's all the parts for one final look before we put it back together. The bottom with its original lacquer waxed up and looks really good. Amazing for something that's almost 140 years old. Same for the tote and the knob. That tote is just flat out spectacular. The knob, you see that staining right there at the top? That's caused by the knob bolt. When it starts to rust over time and it's not being maintained, it'll stain your wood. Same thing happens with the tote. Same thing happens with all the holes in the bottom. If those screws rust, it's going to migrate into the wood and you're never going to get that staining out. Luckily the screws that went into this bottom were really nice shape. And there's the uh, upper casting. It's frog with, with the unique adjustment mechanism right there. That slot that you see down towards the bottom. That slot engages the piece you see right there. It fits into the slot. It's held in your iron by that other part to the left. I don't know the exact name to it, but it goes into the slot on your iron. Cap iron, it cleaned up really good. Amazingly, the bluing survived quite well. It didn't look so good to start with, all coated with rust, but it cleaned up to be really nice. I think it's pretty neat that Stanley made a line of planes to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the independence of the United States. And it's even neater to think that after all this time, this plane is going to be around probably to celebrate the 200th anniversary. So it's time to put her back together. And there's only one thing I can say after seeing this spectacular looking old plane go back together and that's happy birthday. I am really looking forward to seeing how this old plane performs. After cleaning her up and putting her back together that lack of japanning doesn't seem to stand out so much anymore does it? The unique adjustment mechanism is clean and works free. There's no reason why this old girl shouldn't be an excellent performer. The iron is razor sharp and the bottom is true. So there's only one thing left to do and that's take this old girl for a test drive. And for this test drive I'll be using a one inch wide piece of walnut. Santa says this old girl passed the test. After nearly 140 years, this old plane still works spectacular. Look at that. All those walnut shavings, piece of cake. No problem with that adjustment mechanism. There's a close look at the last shaving that came rolling out of the throat. I left it right there because I'm proud of what this old plane did. And that's it for today. I'll be listing this old plane on eBay in January after the holidays. If you want to snatch it up before then, just send me an email and we can talk about it. Until then, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and it's time for supper. Bye.